Well, welcome in, everyone. Thanks for spending your Tuesday evening with us. It's the Thursday. Season. Thursday. It is Thanks, Thursday. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> spending your Thursday evening with us. It's the season finale of After Further Review. You know who this guy is over here on my left, Bradley Kendall. Tonight, though, second time in history. We had him on last year. We're having him on Third time. this year. Third time. Third time. He Third did come time. on for a second time. Yeah, yeah. at some point. Jackson Wright going to talk to us yeah. about the draft. And you know who it is in the back. Evan McDowell. He's sitting back there. <laughs> Nothing's changed. <laughs> Scout. Yeah, same old, same old. Sitting back there, too. We'll go ahead and dive right into it. Like I said, we're going to talk about the draft tonight. Uh, look at some of the Clemson players that are um, up for grabs. So, Bradley, let's dive right into it after further review. With the first pick in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns, I don't know who they're going to select, but they're going to screw it up, whoever it's going to be. So, we will break down who we think is going to be the first overall pick. We'll start there if you all want to. Uh, we'll start with the guest, Jackson. Yeah. After your extensive research you've done, yeah. who have you concluded that will be the guy messing up his career in Cleveland? I think the Browns are going to be peak Browns. I think they're going to draft someone at the number one spot. They could easily get the number four spot, and that's Baker Mayfield. Thank you. And everyone's been saying they're going to draft him. I think they probably will because they're going to be Browns. They're going to draft him at the one spot, even though they could definitely get him at the four spot. No, I 100% agree. That's yes. what I've been saying since the very beginning. I mean, all this talk about Saquon maybe dropping a four. The Giants will take him at two if he's available. That's going to happen. If you're really considering taking Baker Mayfield, just take we Saquon at one. We today, though, that whatever, whoever they've decided to pick, what came out of the, the Browns' front office was that they've made this decision weeks ago. It's been made for about six weeks now. Well, the quarterbacks have changed day to day, supposedly. Yeah, now, but that may just be talk, trying to throw everyone else off. I feel like but. the Browns are going to take Baker Mayfield number one. I feel like they're, they're if in an ideal situation for them, they take take Baker one, they take Saquon four. I know you feel a little bit differently on that, but I feel like, like Jackson pointed out, that the Browns probably feel like it's a safe bet to take Baker. Um, and I don't, I mean, I feel bad to go ahead and say that Baker's, you know, career is written off because he's going to Cleveland. I don't think it is. I don't no. think it is at all. No. I think Deshaun Kaiser's is. Yeah, I, well, I mean, he did a little bit there. He set the record for most interceptions in a season. I'm I pretty think, sure so. Deshaun Kaiser At least he traded. started enough games to set that record, I'm pretty though. sure Deshaun Kaiser was traded. I think he's with the uh, no Packers there? now. Did he? Oh, that's right, because they got Tyrod Taylor. Yeah, yeah, okay. So they've got some stability. I but guess Baker still has enough now. talent that we've seen at the collegiate level to transfer over in the NFL. Whether or not he stays at Cleveland is yet to be seen. But I, my gut feeling is that Baker is going to go to the Browns. I think you're right. The Browns recently acquired some of the guys in their office that came over from Green Bay. And ironically enough, that's the guys that drafted Brett Favre at the time. Mm -hmm. And they see a lot of Brett Favre in Baker Mayfield. And I think that's the mindset they have going into this draft. I don't think they should take him at one, but I think they'll eventually end up with Mayfield and Cleveland as their quarterback. Evan, who so. you got going number one in the draft here in about an hour? I have a series of opening statements before I reveal my anticipated first pick. First opening statement is that the night of the NFL draft is a life-changing experience for a lot of very potentially successful young men. Along that same vein, I am supporting my recently rehabbed buddy, Johnny Manziel, bringing back the T-shirt. I think this is also a new beginning for our boy Johnny. I think he's going to resurrect what little bit of a career he has left. I have high hopes for him, so that's why I'm wearing the shirt. Second off, Josh Allen looks more like a male cheerleader than he does a potential number one overall draft pick in the NFL draft. And third overall, I think this is the year the Browns break their own curse. I think they do the smart thing for once. I don't think they draft Baker Mayfield number one overall. I think they either take Saquon or Sam Darnold because Sam Darnold is a more NFL-ready, NFL-caliber quarterback. And I think we're going to look back in 5, 10, 15 years and go, this is when the Browns turned things around. This is when they got good was the night of the 2018 NFL draft. I've been a low-key Browns fan for a long time just because I hate seeing them be so bad. And I think this is the year that they start turning that around, and that's my bold pick for the night. Are you proposing we start a CFL show, rocking the Johnny Manziel gear? Let's do there? it. Whatever league and whatever team Johnny Manziel joins – I will talk about it, and I'll buy a jersey. I support the movement. <laughs> Love the support. I, I think you're right, though. I think if I was Cleveland, if you really wanted to have the safe bet, I think you take Sam Darnold. You're, 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 mo you're more likely to get some flack down the road if one of the other quarterbacks fails than you would be with Sam Darnold because the consensus around the country is that Sam Darnold is overall the best quarterback in the draft. According he's to probably most the people. safest pick, and he's the, yeah. he's the guy that, like, you know, there, there aren't any off-the-field issues with him, as far as I know. I mean, Baker, you know, he's a passionate guy on the field. Yeah. He's done some stuff on the field, also off the field. But, yeah, I mean, Sam Darnold out of USC, I've been mean, looking at his career stats, and he threw for over 7,000 yards, had 56 touchdowns. He did throw 22 picks, uh, and he finished USC last year 11-3. and three. So he had a successful, run, you know, ending run in, in college. But, I, I mean, I, again, I mean, there's a, there's a lot that can be said about these four, the five quarterbacks that we're looking at with Darnold, Allen, uh, Josh Rosen, Baker Mayfield, Lamar Rosen. Jackson, Rosen. Not a Rosen, but, um, it's Josh Rosen. I, I mean, if I'm like, 
if I want the the guy that I feel like is the um, the best leader, mm-hmm. I would pick Baker Mayfield. I yeah. think his passion think he that he displays yeah. on the on the field and on the sidelines. I know he does off the field stuff, and that kind of comes with every player to a some certain extent. But I feel like that's why I would pick Baker Mayfield over a guy like Darnold. Now, Jackson, with the recent developments regarding the tweets for Josh Allen, do you think that's going to impact his? draft stock at all or do you think it's already kind of predetermined every year i feel like it was kind of already predetermined i feel like he wasn't going to really go that high in the draft anyways everyone talks about him because he has the prototypical quarterback size the arm strength he has all the like tangibles that like you know everyone looks for in a like an nfl quarterback but if you look at his completion percentage you look at a lot of other things his like win loss record at wyoming it was trash like the guy's not a winner he's not being able to you know complete his passes on a consistent basis and i don't feel like he's really all the nfl really likes people are saying he is he hasn't had above like a 55 percent completion percentage ever even even since high school really oh wow when you when you see a guy and one of his top attributes is his hand size there's some question marks there regarding his actual play on the field he's the kind of mold that guys look for when they look for quarterbacks up in gm offices but when it comes to on the field production i don't see any film or anything you can show me that Backs up Josh Allen being a top I mean, there's five also the intangibles, though. There, there's the the football IQ that a lot of scouts, you know, clamor about. So, like, Might Andrew be the only Luck, IQ he has right now. To be Andrew honest. Luck, though, was you know he was celebrated for having a really strong fo- football IQ. Um, so, I mean, I think that out of those five guys, he may be the weakest. Um, but there's something to be said about yeah. Lamar. I mean, because a lot of people said at first, well, Lamar, no way he's going to make it as a quarterback in the NFL. There's just just no way because he's, he's too small, he's going to get hit, and he's going to be – and, I mean, I feel like you made an interesting comparison earlier today talking about how he's kind of similar to Russell, West, or Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson and Marcus Mariota. I see, in terms of I size, see Russell Wilson more mobility, than Mariota. Maybe not arm strength. But, but like we also talked about – when Wilson went into the league, he went to Seattle, which already had a great running back, had a great center, and had a stellar defense. So depending on where Lamar ends up could greatly influence his success. Where do you have Lamar going? I have Lamar going like late in the first round. I have him actually going all the way down to uh, – where do I have him? I have him going to yeah, – Pittsburgh, right? Lamar Jackson? Yeah. Uh, I have him going – I you got him a long way down there, huh? No, first, yeah, you, you got to scroll that quite a ways. I, I don't even think I have him in the first round because I didn't think he was that good. I'm going to make a bold pick. I think he goes 13 to Arizona. Yeah. I think the Cardinals, that would fit. You talked about like having a lot of pieces around him like Russell Wilson did. You got a pretty good defense, some interest, some pretty decent wide receivers. Yeah. You but David Larry, Johnson Larry behind him. Fitzgerald's going to be gone in a couple years. Well, you Larry Fitzgerald's on the way. You got David Johnson behind him and a pretty stout offensive line. I think that would be perfect. If you can let him sit for one or two years and kind of learn what it's like to be an NFL quarterback. That's fair. IQ-wise. I think he would succeed. I mean, Evan, what do you think? You think that Arizona will be a good fit for Lamar, or do you think he's not going to stick around in the quarterback position? I think he's going to pull a Tim Tebow and be stubborn and not be willing to switch positions. He wants to play quarterback in the NFL. He's made that apparent, um, despite what a lot of scouts and professionals have said. He'll never play quarterback in the NFL. Lamar Jackson has straight up said, I want to play quarterback in the NFL. Uh, I think Arizona needs a quarterback. Uh, I think that could potentially work, um, but I think I was talking to Bradley about this all fair. It might have been yesterday, day before, that um, Lamar Jackson does not fit that NFL prototype quarterback. He would rather run with the ball than throw the ball, and when he does throw the ball, he doesn't overwhelm you with his arm, and he never did, even in college. I mean, the reason he got the Heisman was because of those highlight tape runs or the scrambling to make a play and making a good throw, but um, never has he overwhelmed you with his ability to get the ball downfield or, or put it on a dime, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the Cardinals are desperate for a quarterback. Uh, I, I could easily see them taking Lamar Jackson. I could easily see that not working out very well, because if you look at – recent history some of the predominantly mobile quarterbacks that um, were hyped up and then got drafted and and maybe didn't play out like we thought they would so like I mean just scrolling back in recent years like I mean Deshaun Kaiser with Cleveland had a rough year last year he was kind of known as mobile quarterback Deshaun Watson that's kind of an exception because he's the greatest ever Um, Johnny Manziel Johnny Manziel didn't work out so hot um, Marcus Mariota wasn't that mobile, and he's become more of a pocket passer. I mean, Patrick uh, there Mahomes is kind of a small, improvising quarterback. I mean, I know he's kind of a gunslinger, but 
Yeah. That could be an interesting comparison. What about what about even like Cameron to an extent Lee. Teddy Bridgewater and like maybe yeah. if he hadn't gotten hurt we would have seen more production out of him this past year. But um, Logan Thomas, part of that same draft class yeah. as Bridgewater, he was a mobile guy. <laughs> Geno Smith never amounted to much. He's more famous for punching guys than he is throwing a football. No, yeah. yeah. So I mean, getting punched. Getting punched. Getting punched. Getting punched. Getting punched. Yeah. The mobile quarterback is just kind of screwed in the NFL. That's just not how they play. I don't know if he's screwed. It's just it's not. A playing style that works, or it's not a playing style. That's that, what I mean by it, screw. It can't be it, your last first for option. A long time. Yeah, right. Yeah, it can't be your first option. But I think, <laughs> as, in terms of all those guys you listed, I think he might be the most explosive one we've seen. Well, how about the, hold on, wait. Quality. I just found the I think maybe the most accurate comparison for Lamar Jackson I can come up with. How about number two overall in the 2012 NFL Draft out of Baylor to the Washington Redskins, Heisman Trophy winning mobile quarterback Robert RG3. Griffin the third. You're not gonna say RG3, RG3. Robert Griffin the third. Yeah. Heisman winning quarterback, when RG3 mobile quarterback, hurt, no NFL career. When he wasn't hurt, he won rookie of the year. Yeah, well, he had a great career at Washington when he was healthy. Yeah, so but that, then that, when that, he went, that was he one went year. down, he was just completely, and the rest of the team was decimated. Well, and you know why he got hurt? Because he's a mobile quarterback. You can't afford to get hit that often and suffer that many concussions or ACL tears and still expect, hey, I'm going to run the ball and I'm going to be successful at it. No, so if Lamar Jackson doesn't Peyton alter his Tom game Brady, to be more of a pocket trip. passer, it's not going to work out for him. I think if Arizona was to take him, though, or whoever takes him, needs to have a pretty decent backup. I mean, yeah. based on what you said before yeah. with RG3. Going to have to probably... Probably draft another quarterback relatively high in the draft, you would think. So, but I still, I still think he could play quarterback. I mean, even guys like Deshaun, which have kind of stopped running the ball as much and started going to pocket passing a little bit more. I mean, he went out with an injury, so yeah. it he's still happens. Yeah, I mean, it's, already, it still yeah. happens, and now he's more susceptible to that ACL injury again. So you do. I mean, if you're Arizona, you could take Lamar. I, I get your thought process there. I just think that it would be wise to have a, you know, a backup, a guy that could sit in the pocket. And pick off receivers. One more thing about the quarterbacks. Before we, I know we've talked about the quarterbacks extensively. Mason Rudolph, why is he not getting any love around the league at all? I mean, if you ask me, he's basically Josh Allen with the stats to back it up. I don't know why. He was he's, at Oklahoma State? Oklahoma State, yeah. Just gunslinger, throwing it around the field. Yeah, you don't hear his, I haven't heard his name I, much at all. I feel like all. he reminds me way too much of the Baylor quarterback. What was his name? Uh, Seth Russell? Yeah. Or he, no, Bryce uh, Petty. Bryce Petty. Yeah, yeah Bryce yeah, Petty. I think yeah. he reminds me so much of Bryce Petty. I think... You know, they're pretty much one and the same. I feel like they're both great college quarterbacks. I don't know if they're going to be great pro quarterbacks. I think Mason Rudolph can maybe make that adjustment, maybe try to play a little bit better. But, you know, we don't really have evidence of Oklahoma State quarterbacks going to the pros. And Brandon Whedon. Just eating, like Brandon Whedon. <laughs> He's just been he was also 28 when forever, he came just in. Just kind of so. sitting second or third team on uh, whatever team he plays on. So Really quickly before we move on and talk about Clemson players in the draft, what do you all make of the story uh, coming out about, I think it was Josh Allen, right? Josh Allen's tweets, tweets yeah. about the racially insensitive tweets. Of, I think they've come out just the last couple of days. I think it's From so back when he tweeted this morning. He came out this morning. Yeah. This morning Which where is, he, he yeah. tweeted these back in, I think, high school or maybe. Yeah. He was 15. I think it was junior year of high school, yeah. yeah. I, I feel like it was just like someone, like one of the competitive agents is just trying to screw him out of a draft, but I think it's probably one of the quarterback like uh, agents. Probably. So you don't think that there's any – you don't think that a front office or a team should sit there and, and be wary of drafting him based off those tweets that he sent years ago? I feel like you can mature a lot more in six, seven years than probably Baker Mayfield has in a year. So if That's you can fair. look at that, you know, if, if you're going to judge him that hard for that, I would look at Baker Mayfield and judge him harder on just a year. You know, it's harder to mature in one year. Is, is it being blown up though because it's a it's oh a racial God, issue? It's being so blown up. If you ask Josh Allen, and this was confirmed by Stephen A. Smith this morning when I watched ESPN, the tweets he sent out were quoting a Modern Family show and a Rick Ross song. Like he might not be the nicest guy in the world and might have a little bit of an attitude, but this was like seven years ago. That's enough time to forgive this guy. You know, he may have to address the locker room the first day when he walks in, but that shouldn't deter him from getting picked in the top five at all. I don't think it should affect his draft stock at all. Not a, I not mean, a I don't bit. Think, I mean, Evan, what do you think? I mean, I know that, you know, we live in a world where everything you put out on social media, every time you click the tweet button, whatever you say is etched in there forever. Do you, do you think yeah. that what he did this many years ago, six, seven years ago, should have an impact on his draft stock tonight? Do I think it should? Probably not. Will it? Absolutely. Uh, and, and if you want any so evidence of that, why, why don't we ask Laramie Tunsil how that yeah. goes? You know, you throw well, on a. That's different though, because Larry Tunsil's thing came out like ten minutes. Before well, the still, it's the only comparable evidence well, we have convenient. of a potential no, top pick. That's convenient. And it was also that it came smoking out weed, which is punishable. Yeah. 
Yeah. If y'all would have let me finish my sentence instead of both of you cutting me off at the same oh, time. You're welcome. I mean, <laughs> that's how the show works. Yeah, I know. That's why I have to be patient. Finish so. Anyway, I'm saying this is the only comparable evidence we have of a potential top five, top ten pick kind of screwing themselves over on social media, dropping their draft status, um, but still making something out of it. So, yeah, L- Laramie Tunstall was probably supposed to be a top five draft pick. He fell into, like, the top 15. So did it affect yeah. his status? Yeah, absolutely. In the long run, does it really matter? Not really. And like you said, what Josh Allen did uh, so long ago is not nearly as bad and not nearly as relevant or pertinent as – Laramie Tunsil smoking weed out of a gas or mask. The worst things that are said down on the front on the trenches during games, yeah. are like or even Baker Mayfield. That I think Baker Mayfield situation could be even looked at I, worse than what Josh Allen. I don't Allen's think that Baker through. really did anything like planting the flag in midfield and all that. He did get I arrested that one time. He had the incident with the police. But. Yeah, but I mean, well, I mean, bring up bring up Johnny Manziel. Then he got arrested and got into trouble, and he still was a first round draft pick too. So it we've seen that. Though. Players' legal troubles, players' legal troubles, do not really deter teams all that much. Ask Jerry Jones how much he cares how many of his players have been arrested. Jeremy yeah. Jones or G- Jerry, Jerry Jones, Jones out of Dallas? Okay, yeah. Jerry Jones out of Dallas. Greg Hardy. <laughs> yeah, well, again, when he was at Carolina, I, I wasn't a fan of him as a per- player. Yeah, he's a great player, but as a person, he was a terrible human being. But before and Jerry Jones picked him before up. Before we move to the Clemson players, is there anybody outside of the quarterbacks that you believe no one's really talking about that should be getting a lot more love, Jackson? Um, I feel like a lot of offensive tackles are probably going to go in this first round a lot more than like I feel like a lot of people are kind of thinking. I also think a lot more receivers are going to go in the first round because a lot of people are getting kind of desperate for wide receivers. And like I feel like most teams are going to Because Clemson's up. not cranking any out this year. Yeah, Deion Cain's going you second round, Deion maybe. Deion probably going to go second or third. I, I feel like he's going third. Yeah, yeah second yeah. or third. But I feel like um, more wide receivers and offensive tackles will go in this draft than in the first round than most people think because – I thought most people would probably be pretty desperate from that, whether you see Dallas shipping off Des Bryant, mm-hmm. you see Jacksonville losing their star wide receiver. I feel like a lot of teams would be kind of looking for that next number one wide receiver in the first round. And I think even some of these teams that have two picks in the first round, after drafting a quarterback early on or even early second round, are going to be looking to get those wide receivers to be able to give that guy some weapons. So, out of the wide receivers, who do you think is going to have the best NFL career? Um, I think Kirk. Uh, Christian Kirk, Kirk, I would agree. Yeah, I would say he would have the best because yeah. I feel like he can play – all different positions across the field. He can probably play slot. He can play outside. I feel like he can do it all. I think Calvin Ridley would have benefited from coming back another year yeah. and spending another year at Alabama. I, I feel like yeah. it would have also been a lot better if he could have ran a better 40 time because I think he was in the four fives, four, like almost four six. Yeah. And I feel like that's not really what you want to do if you're, if you're Ridley. Well, speaking of 40 times, and we'll move on to the Clemson players, yep. I was reading about Ray Ray McLeod. I know you and I have gone back and forth this a lot. One of the most disappointing combines out of any player out there right now with a four, was a four five 40 time. For yeah. a speedy wide receiver, yeah. that's atrocious. Yeah, he that's needs, terrible. He, he should have been in the four, five, uh, four fours, four threes if he wanted to get somewhat considered to be in the top three rounds. Because everyone knows that he has problems with dropping the ball, like losing, like losing, um, like muffling uh, punt returns, kick returns. So I feel like if he didn't run in the four fours or four threes, I didn't feel like he was going to get drafted in the top three rounds at all. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think you're totally right. I think with these speed guys that have been drafted pretty high recently in the draft, you don't really hear much out of them. I know Tavon Austin, I know he's a lot bigger than Ray Ray was, but he was that speed guy. John Ross didn't even have a single reception, the guy out of Washington last year. So Interesting you're not talking about the Clemson player who should be drafted first, Deion Kane. I, I think he will go first, yeah. I think yeah. he's, he's going to be yeah. the first Clemson player drafted. Um, and a wide receiver that we've talked about a lot – was in a lot of ways seen as the next Mike Williams and never really quite got there. It's a big shoes to fill. He yeah. he did. Yeah. He had a lot of big sh- and you know I mean he stepped up in some games and and had big moments. But overall, we we felt like that he didn't quite achieve what. And I, even I think I saw an article where Sweeney was talking about. Yeah, he says to be honest with you, I think both of these guys in Deion Kane and Ray Ray McLeod have a better chance to be pros than maybe they were as college players. I think it also has to go back to Mike Williams said Deshaun Watson as his quarterback at the time. And yeah. not to say Deion Kane was stuck with Kelly Bryant, but he kinda was. Yeah. So he I think he honestly for Deion Kane's situation, I think he developed a lot more than we thought he was going to. Yeah. Going back a year ago during the play or two years ago with the playoff, how he, you know, was a red and Suspended from the team, where he's at now. I think he developed a lot more than we would have thought originally. Yeah, I feel so. like he mainly developed like mentally and um, and definitely became more mature over time. Yeah, I feel like you know he probably was always that good. Obviously, but like when you looked at flashes his freshman and sophomore year, you know he was really good. Um, I feel like he kind of didn't live up to the full expectations we had, but our expectations were high because of Michael. Well, you speak of career. maturity, talking about. Um, Dion and I feel like, and just my personal opinion, I don't want to diss on Ray Ray, but I always felt like Ray Ray was a little bit more arrogant than he 
deserve to Probably be. Probably so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he carried himself with a certain air that was apparent, and not to say it was a bad thing, because you want to be confident in yeah. your ability, but I also detected that he might have felt like he was a little bit too good at times to be stuck in college. I, I think he kind of looked at Arteta Scott and saw the amount of playing time that he got and the yeah. number of balls that he got thrown his way and was like, yeah. well, I'm just as good, if not better, than Arteta Scott. Why am I not getting, yeah. I'm not getting the same kind of praise? He, in fact, got the worst teammate award back in the 2016 Are you season. Serious? Got the worst teammate award. They gave it out at the end of the season. Davos it wasn't, gave it, a, it to him. it wasn't a joke, right? It was an no, actual... no, they actually gave it to him. Yeah, Jeez. the worst teammate award. That's nice slap in the Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I, I don't want to diss on Ray Ray but I do feel like that sometimes I noticed that he was a little bit too cocky for my liking. Yeah. So, I mean, Evan, what do you think? Do you feel like that, um, I mean, I guess what are your thoughts on Dion and Ray Ray just in general? I think Dion is Mike Williams if Mike Williams was at 75%. Uh, and I think Ray Ray is undersized, overvalued personally to himself. Um not an impressive combine, like you said. He did have a good pro day here, so he's got that going for him. Uh, just a very average grade here on the NFL's official website. They give a, a prospect grade to each of the uh, declaring draft eligible players. And Ray Ray's sitting at a 4.96 out of 10, so he is dead in the middle of everybody right now as far as most ready for an NFL training camp. So, I mean, should we hear Ray Ray's name called? Maybe is it not going to be till Friday? Sat- maybe even Saturday. Yeah, and I think like it'll I said, be during the week. I don't. Think I, I think it'll be the weekend. Saturday. I think it's going to be Saturday. Saturday. Be Saturday. Yeah. If you hear Ray Ray's name called at all, it's going to be fourth round or later. But yeah. I will say though, you've seen guys kind of like him. Like Ty- first thing that comes to mind was Tyreek Hill from the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. He can be successful. He might be one of the best guys to get picked up if he doesn't get drafted at all. He's got potential. Now, will he live up to that? Maybe not. But I think in terms of like overall skill set. There's definitely things that he can do and make an impact in the league. I think the best bet for Ray Ray's NFL career is to take advantage of the fact that the greatest return man of all time, Devin Hester, just officially retired. Ray Ray should just be an all-time return man. Like, just forget being a wide receiver, even though Devin Hester technically labeled as a wide receiver. Just get really good at returning punts and kickoffs because that's a very underrated position for a good team to have. If you can have a good kick or punt returner, that goes a long way in your special teams game. So I think if Ray Ray focused more on that than being a wide receiver, he could potentially have a more successful career or a longer one. Yeah, I mean, that's something that Clemson really hasn't had in uh, at least our time here, uh, a, a reliable punt returner. I feel like every time the ball C.J. Spiller, the well, the Hunter Renfro, but, you know, he's not going to break yeah, one loose down the sideline. as much. It's, uh, who, who did they have back last season a lot? Hunter Renfro had a lot of that. You yeah, but, kick returners? Yeah, kick returns. It, it was Hunter Rogers. and another guy. Was it Amari Rodgers? T. Higgins. Rogers? Yeah. T. Hig- I think Amari Rodgers. T. Higgins Rogers. back a little bit. Well, he's, he's the um, guy yeah, they were. Yeah, Travis going in. I'll give it to Travis. Travis, Travis, yeah. So they mixed in a good bit of guys. There was never really any stability in that position. But, yeah. yeah. I think you're right, Evan. Ray Ray's his only real chance right now is to be that speedy guy to pick up a big play on offense every once in a while. And then maybe be the kick returner guy if he can figure out how to hold the ball when he gets to the one yard line, yeah. if he ever gets. What there. about uh, linebacker Dorian O'Daniel? I mean, I think he's one kind of, of an underrated, underrated player. Players yeah, I feel like he's the, a really un- underrated I, linebacker in the draft I, I right now. I do feel like he's really underrated. The only problem that most people are seeing a problem with him is he's not that strong. Yeah, and he's small. And if, if you he's look at him guy. compared to all the other linebackers in his position, he's fast in all of them. He can definitely keep up with the running back out of the backfield, the tight ends, wide receivers. I feel like he's a great kind of outside linebacker picking up uh, people as they come out of the backfield. However, I don't feel like he's going to be one of those guys that comes in flying through the box and hits someone in the box. and just So it doesn't quite ass. have the aggressive mad dog mentality of Ben Bulware? Ben Bulware. No, does not. Well, hopefully yeah. not, because Ben Bulware is opening a gym right now, not in the NFL. I was about to say, do you feel – I mean, I think Dorian <laughs> has a better chance of making it in the NFL than Bulware. He's Bulwer one of the did. smartest guys that Dabo said he's ever yeah, coached. Yeah, I think so his football IQ that is That alone, high. his mental strength, as opposed to maybe his physical strength, might be what gets him over the edge. Yeah. Evan, what you think in the related to Dorian? I mean, do you feel like he's an underrated linebacker, or is he just too small, not strong enough to make it in the NFL? Um, I think he's got a much better chance than Ben Bowler ever had. I mean, 6'1", 215, not a small dude, and it's going to be pretty easy for him to pack on 30 or 40 pounds of muscle in a yeah. training camp. I mean, right now, he's the number two ranked outside linebacker. Uh, in the entire draft, uh, just ahead of Darius Leonard out of South Carolina State and just behind Leighton Vander Esch from Boise State. Not much uh, competition there. <laughs> uh, no, I can't say I've ever heard of either of those guys. So I think the potential is definitely there. You could see him, like like y'all said, being a steal of this draft, maybe falling to the third, fourth round, something like that. He'll pro- I mean, he, he'll definitely be the second Clemson guy off the board after Dion. Uh, and I, like I said, I think he's got a much better chance 
than Ben Boulware had. And playing with Ben Boulware and on these good Clemson defenses under Brent Venables these past couple years and the experience that he has being a senior, I think, is going to play to his advantage as far as stepping into an NFL locker room and go ahead and being mature and being able to hone his craft. And he knows what he's going to have to do to get better. Yeah. Uh, he's got the awareness. He's got the tenacity. He just needs to get a little bit bigger and obviously adjust to an NFL game speed. But I think there's a lot of potential out of Dorian O'Daniel. I really do. Last but certainly not least, you got guard Taylor Hearn. I saw actually that um, he was predicted to go to the Panthers. Hopefully. I don't, I don't know. Fingers crossed there. But do y'all <laughs> feel, like, guy in do y'all feel like he's going to have a, a, a landing spot after this weekend? Oh, yeah. I think I, I definitely think he's going to be drafted. I think he'll probably be a day three guy. I feel like he'll probably get a fifth, mm-hmm. sixth round maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like it's a toss-up between him and uh, Dorian B., whoever picks second off the Clemson's board. Second? But, uh, second, or, yeah. Third. I think he's going to be second. Uh, well, he, might, he might be second, he might be third. I'm not sure. So you think he would be Dion and then Dorian or Taylor and Ray Ray would be last? I'd say yeah. Dorian probably Really? Would go so ahead. you think Ray Ray's going to be drafted Ray, Ray, last? I think Ray Ray's going to be dra- drafted last. See, yeah. I had him down as a, as a running back. What about though? Tyrone Crowder? Crowder? He'll be a wide receiver. As I'm looking at offensive Crowder. guard rankings you know, for draft players right now, Tyrone Crowder's on this list. That That's something I was looking at. On, on like, Shaking the Southland and all these websites, he's going down as undrafted. I mean, this guy was an all-ECC player for three years and was first team for two of them. I... I, I know he might not have this, you know, the body type that they want in the NFL, but in terms of what he did in college, I mean, they compared him to Jay Guillermo though in that article saying how he might not can't be the best really, thing, but, yeah, he can't really ride off the team's success to get him into the league. And that's amazing when you look at the tr- the transition that guys have to make from the O line in college to the NFL. Mm-hmm. It's just a whole different animal. Oh yeah, no. yeah. That might be the one the position that's most lines. striking out of all the positions that you have so to transition. So that's in. interesting, though. You feel like Hearn is going to go second or third on the draft board, yeah. and you think that Ray Ray for sure is last. I think Ray Ray for sure is last, yeah. I think, honestly, you could see Ray Ray not get drafted at all. Yeah. yeah. He might wow. be an undrafted. I mean, that might be a dangerous wow. thing to say, but. Wow. I, I mean, mean I've told Jackson this in the past. The combine really can't help you a ton, but it can most definitely oh, it can hurt you. you. No, it, yeah, yeah. It can without hurt a doubt. You. Like, Honestly? Like Orlando Brown out of Oklahoma, like the offensive yeah, tackle. Yeah, oh, God. He, he ran, like, the worst 40 I've ever seen in my life. He ran with he a fridge on his back. to save his life. <laughs> like, he, he was going to be a first-round draft pick before the combine. I feel like now he's projected to be a third-round draft pick. Which is a big drop. For when that. your it only skill set is speed and you don't showcase it at the combine, you're screwed. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? What if Ray Ray ends up being mystery irrelevant? What if he's the very last pick in the draft? Just, well, that would put him and Chad Kelly in, in the same yeah, conversation. Then, and I that, don't think we I don't want, really that. want that. So, <laughs> yeah. I don't I mean, know. I mean, lots to talk about. Like I said, the draft's getting ready to kick off here in about half an hour. It will be interesting to see who Cleveland decides to take. They do have the first pick and the fourth pick on lock. Yep. As of um, now. As of right as now. Of now. So a lot, lot can change. But hard to believe, wrapping up season two of After Further View, we've done just about 50 episodes. Now, I think this is officially about 48, 49, but it's been a, a wild ride. As always, we appreciate Jackson coming back on now for the Thank third you, time. Yeah. Thanks for coming back on, no talking problem. about the draft with us. Uh, it's been really cool having Evan in the back uh, since probably about middle of last semester. We started been incorporating him back now, there. Yep. I see Thomas Marshall over in the there corner. He is. He's hanging out. Send out the orange sweatshirt. Um, Scout, as always. We can't, we can't say can't enough about there. all the work and time and effort that Scout has put into this show. As she cuts the camera away from herself to and avoid we, the spotlight. We greatly appreciate it, and we look forward to continuing the show this coming fall. 